so my name is Pete Meyer. I'm standing in for Jason Key. Uh, today's webinar is Andrew Ory, who's going to be talking to us about, about ICM Browser Pro. And we've got upcoming webinars. June 20th is Doc. Uh, July 25th is Bio XTAS. September, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to let us know. Um, October 3rd is Spire, and November 4th, Eman 2. Uh, so with that, I will turn things over to Andrew. Thank you very much, Pete. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to begin by thanking Pete and uh, Jason and Michelle for setting up this uh, webinar, and also uh, to SB Grid Consortium for hosting uh, ICM Browser Pro. So thank you very much for that. So today, uh, I'll be talking about the ICM Browser Pro software, which is a desktop uh, 3D molecular graphics and uh, protein structure analysis software. If you have any questions uh, during the webinar, I believe um, you can text them as we go along. I'll try and answer them. Uh, or alternatively, uh, I'll try and answer them at the end of the webinar. Or you can, after the webinar, please feel free to, to email me uh, here, andy.morsoft.com. OK. Let's go turn off my camera. <laughs> OK. so. Uh, the webinar topics we're going to cover, uh, we're going to go through a lot of these things pretty quickly, but I think the webinar is being recorded, so if you want to go back and uh, check the web, the recording, you might get the individual steps, and hopefully by the end of the webinar, you'll be able to accomplish all of these things with ICM Browser Pro. So we're going to start by how to generate high-quality uh, publication images. So how to, to jump in yeah. there, this, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on the YouTube channel when it's done. So. Oh, great. Thank you. That's Thanks, Pete. Great, because <laughs> there's lots of clicks, and so maybe you can go back and, and go back to the webinar video and, uh, and see them. Uh, so uh, we'll be showing how to color and light, change the lighting, um, how to change representations, so for ribbon, stick, and, and other things, and how to annotate uh, the, stru the uh, structures. And then how to make uh, molecular movies. Uh, we have two different ways of doing that, by generating slides of different um, scenes or just um, downloading exactly what you see on the 3D graphics. Uh, we'll show you different ways. And then uh, how to embed uh, fully interactive 3D data into Windows uh, PowerPoint or onto, the, onto a website via ICM JavaScript and also using uh, mobile devices such as Android and an iPad. And then uh, so these are fully interactive, so you can open them up and actually interact with the molecule as, as, you're, as you're talking in the PowerPoint. So you, there's also embedded in ICM Browser Pro, there's uh, structure analysis tools. So there's uh, uh, crystallographic uh, tools for, uh, for example, you can download the electron density and contour it. You can uh, calculate the uh, crystallographic neighbors. You can measure distances and angles and torsion angles, uh, display hydrogen bonds, and also calculate contacts and surface areas, as well as uh, superimposing structures. And then there's also ways of displaying uh, the binding pocket and the structure, uh, the electrostatics of that, and the, and the binding properties. So we'll cover all of these uh, topics. Just a brief introduction to, to Molsoft, in case you haven't heard of us. Um, we've been established quite a long time, 1994. And we're located in San Diego, uh, California. Uh, we're privately owned and founded by Ruben Abagayan, who's a professor at uh, UCSD. We have a worldwide uh, customer base in academia, pharma, and biotech, and many uh, published success stories in computational biology, chemistry, drug design, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, you may wonder what ICM stands for. ICM stands for Internal Coordinate Mechanics, which is our underlying uh, co uh, coordinates that we use for, for, for modeling. Right, so we don't we don't use Cartesians. We use internal coordinates. In, in X, we don't use X, Y, and Z. We use internal coordinates. All our products run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. And we have the the product we're going to uh, talk about today is ICM Browser Pro, which is on the SB Grid. And there's other products for uh, homology modeling and uh, and sequence analysis and other tools. ICM Pro and Cheminformatics Chem uh, 2D. Um, if you can build QSAR models. Uh, chemical searching and other other things. And a lot of our products have been built in collaboration with actual the, the scientists that use them. So for example, with Novartis, uh, we built a, a ICM Chemist Pro, which is a an environment for medicinal chemists to explore 
uh, new chemistry inside a binding pocket, so you can make modifications and, and, and change them and see the effect on binding. So that was with Novartis. Uh, but with ICM Browser Pro, a lot of the features were developed with um, the Structural Genomics Consortium, and uh, we will talk about that in a minute. So uh, back in uh, 2005, uh, the Structural, Structural Con Genomics Consortium came to us with a, a problem. It was a very good problem for them because they were solving structures uh, faster than they could actually uh, publish them. And so they wanted a, a quick way of putting the structures out on the web so scientists could download them, view them, and interact with them uh, in, th in 3D. And so they could annotate the, the 3D structures as well. So uh, what we developed was a, a single file, which is shown in the middle here. And in this single file, you can add uh, sequence data, images, plots, uh, cheminformatics data, and other, and other forms of data, and then link this uh, data with text and hyperlinks to uh, 3D uh, visualizations and, and, and annotations of, of, of structures. So all of this is directly placed into one single file. And then that, this single file can be shared. You can view it on the ICM browser, which you can download from SP Grid, or you can export it to, to a live um, web page, or you can import it to Windows um, Office. And after a while, uh, a few journals got interested in uh, 3D interactive publications, and some of the uh, some papers were published in this format as well. So when you open ICM Browser Pro, uh, you have access to a wide range of data which you can visualize. So there's the protein data bank, obviously, where you can download uh, PDB structures. There's a direct link to Pocketome, which is a database of pockets um, of structures superimposed around the binding pocket, which is useful if you want to look at um, the flexibility of the binding pocket, for example. You can just single click and search and, and see all the structures superimposed in 3D. And then there's direct links to cheminformatics side of things for Drug Bank, PubChem, uh, Kemble, and, and Shaw Kemble as well, the patent uh, version of Kemble. And also to, uh, you can view alignments from PFAM and ProSite and, and download sequence information from Uniprot. So we're going to start uh, with, I, with a demonstration of ICM, how to generate uh, sort of images for publications. And so all of these, most of the tools we're going to use are in the display tab of ICM Browser Pro. So let me just uh, get ICM up. So you should have, have a single icon. Uh, we can single click on it, and it will open up this uh, graphical user interface shown here. And you will see a, a search bar a tab. And this enables you to search those databases which I mentioned. So it's like NCBI, Uniprot, uh, Drug Bank. Um, but we're going to initially just start by searching the PDB using a keyword kinase. So we can just click here. This then returns a table with all the structures uh, based on our, our string that we searched by. Uh, so, and you can just double click on a, on, a, on a molecule and that will load it into ICM. For this example, uh, you, you can also do other analysis of the table. For example, you can make histograms and, and other, th other things. So it's, it's just a regular table. If your uh, structure is saved locally on your machine, you can just go File, Open, PDB, and it will load in a similar way. So in this example, we're going to uh, use a kinase structure. And the, the, the kinase structure code is 1xbb. So we can just type that directly into the PDB search. And that downloads the, the structure from the PDB. Uh, this is an uh, interesting structure. It has the uh, famous Gleevec uh, drug for leukemia bound to it. Uh, the end terminal here, we have the glycine rich loop coming down on the pocket here, and the hinge and, and the C terminal shown here. So we may want to initially start with this, this structure. This is like a global view of this image. Um, so we can we can make what we call a slide, and there's a slide button here, which you just click on this camera, and it makes a slide. So that means if we change things, uh, mess things up, doesn't matter because um, we can always go back to our original slide just by double clicking, and it brings brings back the structure. So in this example, we're just going to annotate this uh, this uh, crystal structure a little bit a little bit more. So I'm going to just color. You can see when we read it into ICM. Everything loaded in ICM is displayed in this ICM workspace. So if you have chemistry tables or sequences, you'll always find them here. And you see that 
one XBB has three molecules, the A chain, which we can toggle on and off using the button here, uh, the, the ligand here, and then you've got the water molecules here, which we probably won't display. So just for the first uh, thing, we're going to look at the alpha C and the DFG region of the structure. So I'm just going to select, I've selected the molecule that I want to color and I double clicked and then I can color on this, on this panel here. So all the, um, the ribbon is, is white and we can, for example, look for the alpha C, which is this one in the sequence here. We can select it just by dragging over the, the alpha C. So alpha helices are in red, underlined in red. Uh, green is beta sheet and uh, non-canonical helices are, are purple. So uh, we can select here. We can see that it's, it's um, selected here. We can color it red. If we want to highlight the fact that the DFG region of the kinase has uh, moved out of the pocket, um, we can look in the sequence and find the DFG here and uh, color that DFG region, different color, for example, or uh, display it in stick. Uh, we have a selection, so um, we're just going to click on the stick and the DFG is labeled. This might make uh, an, another slide, so uh, we can just click here. Now we can toggle between the two slides that we've made so far. Another something you may be interested in is looking at the residues that are surrounding the ligand binding pocket. So to do that, uh, we can make a, a, a selection around the ligand. So we right click on the ligand, choose neighbors, and it asks for a radius, uh, maybe six angstroms radius. If you had multiple objects, you can choose where, which object you want to choose in or choo choose a select selection in or, um, or, or use all of them and just go OK. And then you can see that we have a selection within six angstroms of the ligand, which is shown in green crosses. And so anything we uh, touch in the display tab will propagate to the selection. So we click on wire here. Um, we may want to uh, change the selection a little bit more because it sometimes just picks up uh, one atom of a, of a residue because it hits within six angstroms. So you may want to propagate that selection to all atoms in the residue that you hit. So there's an R, R button here. And so when we display the stick, we have it displayed like this. Okay, um, we may want to change the representation of the uh, of the ligand. So you can just double click on the ligand in the ICM workspace, which is shown here. And then we have that selected. So when we press CPK, the ligand will be displayed. Maybe we want to change the color of the carbons. We click and hold on the, uh, the button here and say color C only and choose carbon. So we have another slide. Maybe this could be a, a, a third slide. So we can toggle through the different slides that we produce. Uh, we may want to annotate um, that there's a salt bridge here between this alpha C region and this uh, beta 3 here. So we can uh, select those residues. Maybe get a slide just of this showing this uh, the, the, there's a, a uh, salt bridge here. So we can select the residue by clicking on this residue selection button. And, so, and now we have a selection. So if we center, it's going to center onto that uh, part of the structure. Um, it might be nice just to not display all the other residues, just display the residues involved in the salt bridge. So we have this invert selection, this is exclamation mark. So all the selection buttons are in green on the right hand side and on the top. Uh, so we can invert and then undisplay the stick. And so we're just left with the, with the um, salt bridge. We can make a slide or we could maybe just check how, how far apart these two residues are, whether they're in, in distance to make a salt bridge or not. They might be a little bit too far, but we, we're sick. we can use this in the display tab. Uh, we can click on the uh, distance between two atoms button. So it means that we, if we select two atoms, it will, it will display the distance. And so we can make a slide showing the the three angstroms apart. Okay, so basically now what we we have done is we've annotated our structure, and we want to maybe uh, share this information with colleagues. Uh, we can we can do that. So to to, to share it, uh, you may want to add a few uh, few little things to the slides. So we can edit the slides by right clicking on them, choosing edit, 
and then you can add smooth and blending transitions to each one like this and just quickly do that and you can add uh, the names to the you can add names to the slides as well to make it easier to, to know what you're looking at. Okay, final one. Okay. So now um, we have these transitions between each slide, which might make it a bit uh, interesting, a bit more <laughs> uh, easier to view. So uh, we have the transitions. So we can save this as a project with file save project, and you can say then send the file to your colleague, or you can uh, we can export this to a a movie file if you wanted to do that. We can right click and choose export as movie, and uh, that will place it into a MPEG file like that. So. Trans it basically, so it's uh, the, using slides to make movies is probably uh, a more, it's a, a careful way of uh, ensuring each frame is exactly the length of time you want it to be, and it's a very controlled way of making a molecular movie. So at the moment, it's just dumping this this file into a, an, into an MPEG, and then we can um, view that view that by going to the place it was uh, placed. It should be. OneDrive documents, and then that's into an MPEG file, and then you can watch the movie over. And you can change the way it's transitioning and, and another the timing as well. Another way of making a movie is also to um, not use slides, but just to dump um, screen screen dump what you're doing in, in the graphics into a movie file. So you just click on this camera button, and it will record everything that you do in, in 3D. Okay, we may also want to. Uh, present this in a PowerPoint presentation. So to do that, uh, we, we go File, Save Project As, and it's going to give it an example. So then we go to PowerPoint, go File, New, and get a blank uh, presentation. So to, to import into PowerPoint, you first need to download the, uh, the Molsoft um, uh, products so active ICM you need and you go here and you go to active ICM download here and then you go to developer tab and then you choose uh, the controls and you look for the active ICM class then you just make a box the size of the uh, the size you want the, the, the image to be choose the, the file you just saved and then go to uh, slideshow from beginning and your slideshow will be, uh, then it will become acti active. So now, now the molecule is, uh, you've got slides between each one. You can toggle three. Okay. And then uh, to, the other way to, to, sh to share your uh, data is to go to File and Export as active ICM. This, this will export it as HTML. We click on here and uh, we have, you, if you had chemical spreadsheets, you can export it with chemical spreadsheets, but we don't. Um, so if you want to export graphics in ICM JavaScript, it's going to open in browser. Let's go OK. Uh, my default browser is Chrome um, and Chrome prevents you to opening files directly. You have to put it into your um, into your web browser browser directory, uh, your web directory. Uh, but Firefox isn't as careful, so if you just, uh, you just we can just copy that um, URL into Firefox, and uh, it will display like this. So then we have the slides here, and the uh, so if you click on here, this will transition to those particular slides. And this is fully interactive as well. So uh, you can click and drag and zoom in and use the, the tools here, measuring angles uh, and, and other things. You can also add additional HTML uh, information here by just going to File, New in ICM and HTML. And then we have a, an editor here that you can 
um, you can add text and links uh, to, to, to your pre-prepared slides or, or other actions. So you can just, uh, just highlight it and then go to slide and then choose the slide you want and go OK. Or you can use a, a, a script or an external link for your, your link. If you're interested in ICM scripting, everything you do in the ICM workspace is dumped into the terminal window here. So you can learn the ICM command line at the same time. Okay. So I just want to show you some different graphic effects that you can use. Uh, the, the PDB, I'm going to use a, a trypsin molecule. It has a PDB code of 2SNI. So I went to search tab, I just typed in 2SNI. Uh, this, if we display the structure, click and hold on the ribbon and say color by molecule, we can see we have two molecules, uh, the, the trypsin and an inhibitor that's bound in yellow. So it'd be nice to see the contacts between the uh, trypsin and, and its inhibitor. So one way to do that is to uh, go to, if we right click on the, on the molecule, choose shapes, make, we can make uh, molecular uh, surfaces and color the surfaces uh, in the way that, um, and, and, and uh, plot the interactions between the two structures. So we made uh, two, two, two surfaces, and uh, you can see that the, if we undisplay the ribbon, uh, we can see that the contacts of the inhibitor are sort of um, painted onto the surface of the, of the structure, of the, of the surface of the protein. And um, also the, uh, the residues on the protein are also labeled as well. So uh, we can click and hold in here and change the color of those labels if we, if we want to. Um, we can also select the, re the those particular residues that are labeled. So you just click and hold on all the buttons. I've got click and hold, which give you other options. And um, for example, we could uh, we could change the color of the surface. Um, right click and say color uniform uh, white, and so this gives the whole surface white. And then we may want to just color it ourselves by these contacts as well. So we can select the residue labels, and then right click on the this is the surface here that's generated, and then color by atom selection. And um, let's give it a, this is the brush size, how big the paint's going to be. So, so you can see the surface here. Um, we may want to cut away the surface. And so to cut away the surface, uh, we can use the, the clip, clipping tools here. So if we just use it like this, it's clipping the surface as well as the, the protein representation underneath. Uh, but if you want to just, um, clip away the surface and not the ribbon, for example. Um, we can do that with the lock button, which locks the clipping plane of the, of the protein. So now when we uh, clip away, we just clip away the, the top of the surface and you're left with, with the structure underneath. OK, so some different uh, effects that you can use. There's the fog effect, and that is turned on by default. There's a fog button here, so you can check it on and off. Um, so you can use the clipping planes to clip away the rear of the structure, put it in more into the fog. Or you can uh, clip, away, clip away the front of the protein, or just restore the clipping planes. And the front uh, clipping plane here, we can clip away as well. So other effects you can use are transparency. So we can change the, uh, the surface to transparent uh, by right clicking on the surface. So it's made this extra surface object here and just say smooth transparent. And then we can uh, play around with the transparency level in the lighting tab. There's this alpha change. So you can, so it's opaque and then you can change the, the level of transparency here. You can also, uh, change the some other like shine and other um, objects there's sketch accents which will outline the uh, 
uh, surface or the, or the I give this uh, black outline to, to each um, element. So even and the, uh, the structure in the back also has the sketch as well. And then there is uh, shadows. So um, just, uh, just on this yes, the shadows are just tog toggled on and off with this um, option here. So you can see there. You can see you can change the direction of the light lighting from the X to Y direction here if you, if you want to change the shadow. Okay. So once you have an, an image that you like um, that you want to um, dis to, to to make as a, a PNG um, or a JPEG or TIFF format, um, you can toggle the high quality graphics. So this is going to just click here. You can, and the anti-aliasing, and you can see now the the, the edges are, are much uh, tighter, and it's not so much um, it, it's a high quality image. So then we can go to click on this button here next to the camera, and choose uh, copy image to clipboard, or write image advanced. And um, you can choose to have a transparent background. You can play around with the proportion sizes, give the file a name. And go okay. That will save save your file. Okay. Just uh, before we move on to the structure analysis, I just wanted to show that um, you can also uh, tag certain regions. So in this um, in this structure, we have the the residues shown as stick that make interactions with the inhibitor. So we can select those sticks. Click and hold and choose uh, select, and then we can tag it. So we can always come back to this selection at any point. Um, we go annotate, make site, and just call it. Uh, okay. And just go OK, and then this adds uh, this. Uh, Annotation, which you can change, you can drag it, um, but it also means that you can always go back to that selection as well. So um, it, it saves it in the in the PDB in the ICM workspace, and we have this um, uh, this option called tags, and so um, we can just uh, select and toggle. So um, so the contact one I made was contact two, I think. And um, you can then just toggle that region on and off using, so you, you can just um, label and go back to regions that might be of interest. Okay. So that's the, the graphics, uh, the main part of the graphics. And so moving on to, we also have this option, occlusion shading, which gives you more depth to the pockets uh, and as well. But um, moving on to, Protein structure analysis. Uh, so inside ICM, there's uh, crystallographic tools generating neighbors, biomolecules, and displaying and contouring electron density. Uh, you can also display uh, B factors and occupancy. There's also tools for measuring distances, which I, I showed, displaying hydrogen bonds, uh, calculating contact and surface areas, as well as uh, superimposing protein structures. And you can also, for things like uh, the electrostatics, you need to build a whole full full atom molecule. So you need to add hydrogens. Uh, we have an option to, to add missing atoms that are in the residue, residues that the crystallographer hasn't seen. Um, there's also a way to optimize the polar hydrogens and uh, check the ideal orientations of the glutamines and asparagine residues uh, for hydrogen bonding network and also the histidine orientation uh, for the charge state. So these are the options that are inside ICM Browser Pro. So just uh, as an example, okay. So we have another uh, kinase here. It's one IEP. And 
we also download pre-downloaded in this example the the maps so you can see that the maps are shown as as as, as dots but we, it's, it'd be good to uh, contour these maps so we can better see the uh, what the crystallographer has actually seen so um we can contour so basically all that did so far were two it's the pdb search and typed one iep then went to tools and then x-ray and then there's a direct link to the it used to be to the Uppsala site but uh, the electron density site there but map uh, site but now i think um the pdb um in in europe um hosts it so you just um go okay and it will read the electron density map so that's what we've we've done so far so we can contour a region so we just double click on the ligand for example and contour that so we've got a selection here in green crosses and then we go to uh, tools x-ray and then there's an option called um, contour electron density map it asks you which map you want to contour and it's uh, this one m for map underscore one iep and you can contour at two different levels at one and 2.5 and give them different uh, colors and just go okay so now that region around the the ligand is uh, contoured and uh, so we can toggle this is uh, contoured at 2.5 sigma we can contour that one off and just leave it at one or you can adjust the sigma directly using the plus and minus um, option here so you can see the value changing as we, we toggle it on off. so this ligand fits very well into the, the density into the map okay so other uh, tools for analyzing structures uh, we have inside ICM browser pro we have just an example here so we have the same structure that one IEP kinase we also have another uh, kinase one OPK uh, so uh, it would be good to uh, superimpose these structures and there's different ways of doing it but the most convenient way is just to right click and drag and select the two structures that you want to superimpose and then go to the display tab and there's a superimpose button here and it asks you which one you want to be static and you go okay and it will superimpose those two structures on the fly very quickly it's quite a, an interactive uh, superposition tool so basically anything you select it will try to superimpose so um, Maybe we could try maybe try this loop region here, and then superimpose, and it superimposed that loop. So it's quite an interactive tool. If you want to be more specific about how you superimpose, you can go to Tools and then Superimpose, and um, just select what you want to superimpose. Go to Tools, Superimpose Proteins by 3D. And you can use the sequence or um, superimpose a C alpha backbone um, atoms, or any other selection uh, that you want. Okay. So these two structures are superimposed. Um, one has a. It might be interesting to look at the the binding pocket of of one of them. So we can display the ligand in stick shown here it's going to uncancel that so we're going to show the we can show we can contour the the binding pocket and build a surface of the of the binding pocket by right clicking on the ligand and choosing pocket uh, receptor pocket and that will uh, display the the receptor pocket by uh, binding properties so there's uh, green is hydrophobic blue is hydrogen bond donor and red is hydrogen bond acceptor or you can color it um, by the what we call the uh, ligand surface and you go okay and this gives you a better representation of um, where there's a cavity that you may want to you for, for drug design basically so you can see this um, pocket is very closed 
obviously around the hinge region here there's a you can see that there's maybe a, somewhere you could build out this way it's completely closed at the back here and the only place of space is towards the dfg region of the kinase around here um, so this is one this is different representations of the pocket um, we can also so this is a, this is the dfg out pocket we can maybe color it uh, red for example and then we can build the pocket for the memory issue here <laughs> uh, so um, it's an open example so we can superimpose those structures back again and um, we can display the pocket of one of them set the pocket okay and we can generate the pocket for the other one which is DFG in uh, we can right click and choose pocket receptor pocket and then we can we can compare the the different shapes of the pocket. So if we color the uh, this one here, um, particular color, just color color it white, for example. And we can color the pocket from the DFG out. Uh, what well, I tried to do earlier, it seemed to get um, overwhelmed. We go red, and so then we can compare the two. So you can see that the the DFG. Um, out pocket has all this extra space to to, uh, to utilize for, for the drug. Okay. So just uh, to finish, um, the you can also color as I showed. You can color by binding property, or or, elect, or use electrostatics. So you can uh, make a selection, and um, it will. Uh, generate a surface. So you go to meshes tab, choose electrostatics, and that takes a, a little bit, of, a little bit of time to run. Um, it's based on uh, Ruben Abagayan's paper um, back in 2001 called, and the methods called um, Rebel, uh, rapid rapid boundary element salvation electrostatics. The papers described there. So the uh, running and uh, just to show you that uh, the the graphical the user interface can be adapted uh, you can add your own um, you can add your own uh, dialogues and menu items as well uh, so you can customize it to how you how you would like uh, that the the GUI interface to be um, so if you write your own scripts you can add your own uh, buttons and and uh, menus uh, so, for example, uh, a paper, this paper describes how we worked with um, Novartis to uh, generate um, this environment for, for their medicinal chemists uh, to use. And uh, you can, the, 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 the papers described here, basically, it's a tool uh, for interactively designing uh, molecules. But um, it basically uses the, so the ISIM Browser Pro interface. Initially, we've got the file, tools, and edit, and view menu, and there's some additional menus uh, on top of that. So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email me or um, support at molesoft.com and uh, or call. We also have a, a knowledge base uh, link on our website, uh, which can be uh, you can ask questions. And uh, we're holding a two day workshop in San Diego in June. If anyone's interested, that covers a bit more beyond uh, graphics, it goes on to docking and virtual screening and QSAR models and, and other things like that. But um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Andrew. That was a very interesting talk. Um, I, I have two questions. And if anybody else has any, feel please put them in chat and I'll ask them if, if there are any. But, Great, thank you. Uh, I guess my first question would be you had recommendations for how to do presentations with PowerPoint on Windows. 
I'm mm -hmm. curious to know what would you recommend or do you have any recommendations for people who are either doing PowerPoint on a Mac or Keynote on a Mac? Yeah, unfortunately, um, Mac doesn't support the um, the Active ICX, uh, ActiveX uh, plugin. plugin. Um, so uh, for Mac users, we recommend that uh, maybe to use the um, JavaScript, if you can toggle to, to you know, you can make your own web page. And then, um, for example, here we have the ICM JavaScript. And you can, if you can toggle between your, your PowerPoint and a, and a web page, then you can um, interactively uh, show uh, molecules that way. Uh, so when you generate this ICM JavaScript, you, you, you can toggle between your slides. This, this, this only has one slide, but um, you can you can jump between each one that way. Um, at the moment, that's the only solution we have, unfortunately, uh, for Mac. Uh, um, okay. Well, actually, I would say the other solution you've got is exporting to a video, which you already talked about. So. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, not quite as interactive, but um, yeah, it pretty. Yeah, it's the same. Thing. Thanks. Uh, the, the second question I'd had was for the electron density. Right. Could you say anything about it, which formats are accepted and how how they care about which region of the map you're loading? Is it asymmetric unit and then symmetry expansion, or is it just brick of density over whichever region? Um, yeah, basically it's the, the 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 brick of the density, basically. And then um, yeah, if you wanted, I didn't show, but uh, you, yeah, if you wanted the, the neighbors, um, you'd have to uh, generate the crystallographic neighbors. So, for example, for this one, uh, yeah, and then um, it will generate, and then you can contour outside, you know, uh, away from the original uh, subunit that you have. Um, yeah, so it's just it's just reading in the density as, as it is from the Uppsala or, or, or the, the PDBE now. Oh, that's, yeah. I, I find that both things have their pluses, both ways of doing it have their pluses and minus, and I always have a tendency to alternate back and forth depending on what I'm doing. So I, I'm glad to okay. hear there, there are different ways. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then whatever you have selected will be contoured um, as well. So. so those were, I didn't have any more questions for you. Um, I don't see any questions either locally or through chat. Okay. So I guess thank you again. Yep. And thank you, Pete. Thanks so much for your time. Yep. Thank you. Have a good Cheers. afternoon, everyone. And you. Bye bye.